Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor David. Welcome to Mission of Grace Church. The psalmist writes in Psalm 65, Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. Let us pray. Father, as we stand here, sit here this morning as the people of God, we have come with a singular purpose to worship you. Lord, to lift you up, to magnify you. Father, help us to see what you have disclosed to us. We pray, Lord, that you would engage every heart, that we could worship you this morning in spirit and in truth, without distraction, Lord focused upon your greatness and glory. Help us, Lord, to please you in that way. And Lord, as we do, may you edify each and every heart. May we learn of you, Lord. May we hear from your word, and may your word speak to our hearts. Lord, you are God, and we are not. And we pray, Lord, to worship you as you wish to be worshipped, for you are sovereign and we are not. All praise and honor and glory are down to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. and glorify our God, the Father of our Lord. In Christ he has in heavenly realms his blessings on us for. For pure and blameless in his sight he destined us to be. And now we've been adopted through his Son
day by day And with each passing moment Strength I find To me my trials here Trusting in The Father's wise bestowing I've no cause For worry or for fear Ease your heart Let's pray for our spiritual needs, shall we? Our Lord, our God, we adore you in everything that we have is yours. Everything we are, if it is good, is yours. We adore you, Lord and Savior. You are altogether beautiful. Your holiness is like no other. Your train fills the temple, Lord. And Father, we give you thanks this morning and we pray, Lord, that we would build each other up, that we would cast our cares upon you, that we would delight in your word and expect great things from you, that in faith we would expect answers to prayer and that we would pray that way. Forgive us, Lord, for our many sins. Help us to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Help us to give cheerfully, Lord, 
and generously. May we walk in humility, Father. May you increase our faith and give us joy in the journey. We pray also, Lord, that we would know your love and have ears that would listen to wise counsel. We pray for each one who's hurting, who mourns the loss of loved ones, that you would give them comfort. We pray for those who need a touch in their body or the body of a loved one. We pray you would give them healing. And for those, Lord, that need salvation, we pray you would do a work of grace in their hearts and that you would save their souls. And Lord, may we love you with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. And may we love others as we love ourselves. May you open your word to us this morning that we would understand it, that we would uh, take it into our hearts and lives, that would, it would become the fabric of our inner life, Lord. And may you anoint the lips of this preacher, these lips of clay. Father, may I preach as a dying man, never to preach again. And may each and every person here hear as a dying man or woman, never to hear your word again. May you banish all distraction, we pray, and help each one to do so. In Christ's name we ask, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now it's time just to make mention of remembering for tithes and offerings. The needs of this church continue during this remote ministry. And there's a couple of ways that you can remember to give, either by visiting our website, missionofgracechurch.org, or mailing directly to 358 Pleasant Street, Gardner, Massachusetts. Proverbs 31.10, we'll be reading verses 10 through 31. Hear now the word of God. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, 
and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. The Word of God. I wish you all had the opportunity to meet my Aunt Grace. My Aunt Grace was a dear, sweet woman who loved everyone and everything. She enjoyed beauty and she was grateful for all the good things in her life. She found the good wherever it could be found. Praise was upon her lips. C.S. Lewis once said, Praise is inner health made audible. You can see that proved over and over. It's the miserable and the misers of the world who seldom praise. They have an inner sickness of soul that yields criticism and complaining and grumbling and sarcasm and suspicion and a general joylessness. Downer, right? You want to take those people and shake them and say, Jesus died. That changes everything. He rose again. He's ascended. He's seated at the right hand of God. That changes everything. He's coming again. That changes everything. There is much to praise, right? Praise him. Praise the moral beauties that still exist in the world. Praise the natural beauties. Thank God whenever we can. Break the habit of complaining. Get yourself hooked on praise. It's so much better. That's where you're supposed to be. And so we take a short break to bring Proverbs 31 to you, which is a great encouragement for mothers, wives, women, and indeed, everyone. And it's important to understand it correctly. First, it's an acrostic poem in Hebrew that lists the virtues of an excellent wife. If you understand it as a laundry list of do's and don'ts, it will bring consternation to you. You will say, oh, how can I do all that? How can I match up? How can I live up to this list? But if you understand it as the beauty which flows from the gift that God gives, you will be encouraged from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. God, in his grace, through Jesus Christ, gives us the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of the Lord leads to the deep delight of serving God and serving others. It doesn't go the opposite way. You see, it flows down from the top. You dig? If you're married, a lot of times your wife 
will come up to you and say, does this look good on me? Does this make me look fat? How's this one? Guys, you've had that? That's okay. It's perfectly natural. We're not, you know, saying it's a bad thing. But you know what really, really looks good on women? The fear of the Lord. A woman that fears the Lord is beautiful. Beautiful. You know, I just had to get my exercise for today. Grace is not striving for acceptance, but it is thriving from acceptance. You see, we love because he first loved us. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, not vice versa. This is the life of joy. It is the way it's supposed to be. And we must confess it's a rarity in our society today, especially in these waning hours of human history. An excellent wife is precious, but hard to find. The scripture says, an excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Men, the second most important decision you will make in life is the person you marry. Amen? The first important decision is what you will do with Jesus Christ. Right? Take your time. A vow should not be quickly broken. Should not be quickly made because it isn't easily broken. You're getting married, you make a vow. Know this. That attraction can be a distraction. How so? Beauty is one thing. And if there isn't chemistry, there'll be no romance, right? There's got to be some attraction. However, it is the character of the person you must realistically assess. Everybody is on their best behavior when they're dating. You'll never find them better, will you? But then you get married, and then reality sets in. Oh, I never knew you picked your teeth at the table, took spinach out of your molars. Oh. Be careful of the insecure person. They're so fearful of using, losing you that they will alienate you from everything else you love. From your family, your identity, and even your Lord. Insecurity is rampant in our society because so many people tragically grow up in single-parent homes or homes of divorce. They have one parent, essentially. They don't have two. And when they become adults, they're so fearful of repeating the pain of the experience that they're insecure. And that happens. They'll take that into their new relationship. But an excellent wife, an excellent woman is one who fears the Lord, not the future. The grace of God in Jesus Christ gives us the fear of the Lord. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. You know, a snare is a lure or a trap. 
Fishermen use lures to catch fish. Hunters use traps to catch game. Satan uses snares to trap human beings. One of those snares is the fear of man. Jesus says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Jesus was preparing his disciples for the physical persecution that would follow. They would be beaten and stoned and flogged and imprisoned, and many of them would be killed. Yet he warned them to not let fear stop them from proclaiming the gospel. But there is a threat that is more prevalent to American Christians today, and that's the psychological fear of man. This fear is an anxious need to receive affirmation from those around us. The fear of man manifests as people-pleasing, as compromised values, as peer pressure, and a choice not to share the faith. The fear of man can be a snare when it influences us to make decisions. Rather than obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, we opt for avoiding what we think is unpleasant. The fear of man is a snare that supplants the fear of God in our lives. And the fear of man has replaced biblical convictions in some allegedly Christian circles today. If we were people pleasers, we might preach a different sermon or preach it a different way to gain a greater crowd. You see, public opinion has overridden the clear teaching of Scripture on many social issues. Now, a noble wife will fear God instead. A noble wife will be a nurturing mother. The home and the family are foundational to a blessed life. Someone has to run it. And no one can do it better than a woman who fears the Lord. She's the heart of the home. The most important position in the world is homemaker. And today, many women would be embarrassed. What do you do? I'm a homemaker. They'd be embarrassed to say that, but they shouldn't be. Because the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. She is noble and precious. Her goal is not to try harder to be good, but to trust God for his grace. Remember when Jesus said his response to those who asked, what must we do to perform the works of God? He said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. Our work is to believe Jesus. Not to believe in Jesus, but to believe Jesus. And there's a difference. Now remember the Lord who sternly rebuked the priests in Malachi? He said this, In this second thing you do, you cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. You imagine? The priest is going there to make the offering, and he doesn't, the Lord doesn't accept it. So he can't do his job. But you say, why does he not? This is why. 
because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth, to you, whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. You cheated on your wife. You weren't faithful to the Lord. You weren't faithful to the covenant between you and your wife. Did he not make them one with a portion of spirit in their union? And what was the one God seeking? Godly offspring. So guard yourselves in your spirit and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. Every man who's a husband must do that, right? We must guard our hearts and be faithful to our wives. An excellent wife is precious. And there's loyalty in love, isn't there? The increasing beauty of a wife may not be on the outside, but is on the inside. A mature husband of a woman who is his wife and the mother of his children will take a bullet for her. Will you take a bullet for your spouse? It stands written thus, Wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Boy, that takes away marital conflict, doesn't it? Do not let your adoring be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. How can you be gentle and quiet of spirit? Because you fear the Lord and you trust him. You trust him with the future. You're not always freaking out because you trust the Lord. For this is how holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, listen, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Husband, if you're not treating your wife right, your, hair, your prayers, I'm not going to get farther than the ceiling. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, in a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to this you are called that you may obtain a blessing. This is the instruction from the Word of God. This is from the owner's manual. This is from the Chilton's, guys. And so, these list of virtues in Proverbs 31 is a mirror for the Christian woman. By the way, not only is a wife hard to find, but Proverbs 26 says, who can find a faithful man? So men think they're basking in goodness, but don't. Too often, the selection of a wife is based upon merely looks, 
or economics, but it must be based on Christian character. Does she fear the Lord? Is she real with God? Right? The most precious thing you'll ever have other than your salvation as a man, as a child, is a good wife and a mother. How can you identify a woman who fears the Lord? What does she look like in action? That's what the passage gives us. What sorts of things can we praise her for? Well, first, again, she's not anxious about the future. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. Satan tempts her to be anxious and fearful. And what do people do when they're anxious and fearful? They yell. They get stressed out. They bring conflict to any relationship. She trusts in God, therefore is not anxious for the future. And her fear of the Lord makes her fearless of man. And she knows that the Lord has appointed means for our safety. She is not afraid for snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Winter can be a fearful thing in New England, can it? But she is prepared. There's a means, right? God just says, didn't say, sit there and your winter jacket will just fall out of the sky. You got to send somebody into one of those department stores or Amazon, whatever, to get it. I think of my wife because she's addicted to buying spring boots for the grandkids at Easter. You know those cute slicker boots with the things on them like sharks and flowers and stuff? She, must, she has to buy them at Easter for the, for the grandkids. And so the, this Easter was no exception. And um, I saw a whole group of them, you know, there's a picture of them wearing their boots. And I'm like, at first I'm like, oh. But then I'm like, you could see the pride those little ones had and the fact that they had boots and they were ready for the rainy weather, you know. Who doesn't need slicker boots? Second, the woman who fears the Lord has practical wisdom and she teaches it to her children. Do you teach your children or do you just give them to the state system and let them handle it? No, you should be the primary teacher of your children. Your faith should be transmitted to your children. Amen? The woman who fears the Lord is strong. She has intellectual strength, physical strength. And she doesn't live for herself alone. She's not sitting on the couch watching TV eating bonbons you know, while you're at work. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She's industrious. I remember one Christmas when things were tough. One of my daughters grabbed a bunch of rocks from outside and painted scripture verses on them and gave them as gifts to the family because the family didn't have money to buy gifts. She was industrious. Her husband came home and asked her, what are you doing? And she said, saving Christmas. God bless her for that industriousness. Wives far more important than the financial support of your husband 
is the moral support of your husband. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. It's him doing business. And he can do business because she's behind him, helping him. You've heard the old statement, right? Behind every good man, there is a good woman and a surprised mother-in-law. She completes him. She doesn't compete with him. Do you know some wives compete with their husbands? She takes care of her husband. Think of a pastor's wife. A pastor's wife to a pastor is like wind to a fire. She can fan it up or blow it out. I thank God for the wife that God gave me. I don't know how any man can pastor a church without a wife. I just don't. She's got my back. And you know how it is when she goes. The last time I was eating kielbasa and raviolis. Which sounds fine was really gross. I can cook, but I just got too much stuff rolling around in my head to actually do it, you know? But I thought about this. In 35 years of marriage, my wife has never done or said anything in public that would have caused me to be ashamed. I hope you can say the same, you married men. And another, a last thing that we'll mention, she lives for the good of the needy. She's philanthropic. She cares about others. But I want to zero in on this right now. Listen, you there? I don't know if you're there. 50-50 maybe. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Listen, the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. There are some mothers who are continually annoyed with their children. I hope that's nobody in here. They're not patient with them, and as a result, the children do not learn patience either. A woman who fears the Lord is not always trying to get away from the situation she's in. She's not always trying to put the kids down for a nap or just waiting for when they go to sleep. She enjoys the journey, knowing that the journey ends together at the celestial city in heaven. Parent, person, enjoy the journey even if you're in adverse circumstances. Are you listening? Can you hear me? Are you paying attention? Little ones make such persistent, impatient demands on our time. And moms, particularly, must teach them wisdom from the Word of God and do so with kindness on their tongues. Kindness will never be learned by our children unless we not only teach it, but model it. Some things are better caught than taught. We must pass down the faith and the practical living of it 
patiently, gently, persistently, and kindly. When my children were little, lots of people would come over and say, oh, you know, enjoy it. They grow up fast. And we would be, yeah, 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 whatever, right? They're right. It's true. They grow up fast. Enjoy every moment with your little ones. And I never forgot this little scene. I want to paint it for you. We had four kids, and um, we spent some time at this grand hotel at the sea, which is kind of beyond, you know, our kind of thing. We didn't do that. It's kind of stuffy, you know. And we got the feeling quickly that we were fish out of water. We were like the Griswolds there, you know. People were like, who let them in? And um, the hotel was filled with older folks with money, you know. Old Yankee, crusty curmudgeons, that kind of thing. And we were sitting there at a breakfast table, our children around it, and a woman came in like she was the Queen of England, and she said to the maitre d', I'll never forget, just don't sit me next to the nursery. We knew the comment was intended for us. And the woman sat over a few tables, and she was watching us. The kids were so well behaved that when she came over after, she was praising them, saying how behaved they were, how wonderful they were. And we were like, yeah, yeah, you were the lady who said that we were the nursery. But folks, can I say this with all the love in my heart? If parents and grandparents don't teach their children everything they need to know and live, they will grow up feral. Feral! If you go out into society today, you'll see feral children all over the place. They're wild. They haven't been taught anything. And they're invading society. And just think, someday they will be running things. Happy thought, isn't it? The feral people will be in control. Ah. Finally, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Look for a woman who fears the Lord. Love a woman who fears the Lord. Be a woman who fears the Lord. A true worshiper who's in awe of the Lord's word and is in awe of the Lord. She seeks no praise, but she gets it. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in her gates. Many of you are going in the wrong direction. There's a disconnect between your life and the fear of the Lord. There is. You just don't fear the Lord. Perhaps you don't know the Lord. I don't know. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. I thought we were to praise God only. Well, this is an indirect form of praise that we praise something that God has done in somebody else. It's okay to say thank you to someone. It's okay to say, hey, that's great, great work. It's not like you're, you know, because you know the source of everything good is God, right? But we praise these women who fear the Lord to strengthen their hand in the Lord. A husband who's nitpicking, who's complaining, who's critical, doesn't help anything, does it? 
And that marriage is on its way down. Right? We must praise those, honor those who honor God. Strengthen their hand in the Lord. I love the way you fear the Lord. Think about this. If you're a person this morning who has a mother alive, suppose your mother was in a car accident tomorrow and they were going to lay her out on Thursday, what would you wish that you told her today? Her children rise up and call her blessed. Tell her now and you will strengthen her hand in God. And what about husbands? What would you say if you lost your wife this week? What would you say today, Sibber Lily? Would you repent of criticism and nitpicking and build her up? Somebody said this, and it's so true. Death puts everything in perspective. It does. It certainly does. Praise where praise is due now, not tomorrow, when they're alive. You'll strengthen her heart in God. You'll honor the Lord and you will enjoy it. The only way one can be a Proverbs 31 woman is if that woman is a born-again woman. There's no other way to fear the Lord. We don't know the plans that God has for our children, our grandchildren, or our great-grandchildren. But we are commanded to teach them the ways of the Lord and instill in them the fear of the Lord because truly the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Motherhood is no easy thing, but when done right, is the, one of the highest callings that there is. Do you know that? Homemaker, mother, high calling. And so, may we all be supportive of women, wives, mothers. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift you've given us, the many gifts you've given us. One of those is fear of the Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us, that you would work into us the grace, the grace that brings fear of you and the fear of sinning. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen.
singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen and amen.